This video will discuss a combined gastroscopy and colonoscopy examination. Gastroscopy is a procedure where a thin and flexible tube with a camera and light at the tip is inserted through the mouth and used to visualize the upper digestive tract. Colonoscopy is a procedure where a different flexible tube is inserted into the anus and advanced to the entire length of the large intestine. Usually, the gastroscopy is done first, followed by the colonoscopy. This video will discuss the preparations before the scope, what to expect during the scope, and the recovery period after the scope. Let's first discuss the preparations before gastroscopy and colonoscopy. Share with the doctor all the medical conditions that one is suffering from. Share if there are any allergies to drugs or a history of asthma. Share all the medications one is taking. These are some of the medicines that may need to be stopped before the procedure. Always seek advice from the doctor before stopping these medications. In particular, one should share if they are on any blood thinning or anticoagulant drugs. On medical advice, these medications might have to be stopped for a few days before the scope as otherwise it is not possible to take a tissue or remove a polyp. The patient should always ask a relative or friend to accompany them home after the colonoscopy or call for a ride hailing service to take them home as the effects of the injection which are given to relax during the scope can last for the rest of the day. The colon needs to be cleaned before the procedure. The doctor or nurse will give advice on how to clean the colon. A low fiber diet for at least two days before the colonoscopy is recommended. This slide shows the high fiber foods and colored beverages that have to be avoided two days before colonoscopy. It is advised that colored beverages with the colors red, blue or purple be avoided because it could be mistaken for blood during the examination. Foods to be avoided include lentils, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, high fiber cereals, colored beverage and fiber enriched beverages. This slide shows the low fiber foods that are recommended two days before colonoscopy. This slide shows what happens one day before the procedure. The low fiber can be continued for breakfast and lunch on the day before the procedure. However, the low fiber diet must be stopped by 1 p.m. After 1 p.m., only clear fluids can be taken. This slide shows the two commonly used preparations to clean up the colon. Some doctors prefer to use a laxative called Picosalax, while others prefer to use a laxative called PEG. The top part of the slide shows the preparation with Picosalax, while the bottom part shows the preparation with PEG. These laxatives are given one day before the procedure. Details of the colon cleansing procedure will be given by the nurse or doctor. After taking the laxatives, one will purge many times that evening. A good cleansing means that the diarrhea should be clear, either like water or yellow like urine. The cleaner the colon, the less likely the doctor will miss abnormalities like polyps. Avoid juices you cannot see through like tomato, orange juice, milk and no red, blue or purple colored items. To make PEG more palatable, chill it or add lemon and sip with a straw. 
Keep KY Jelly or Vaseline or Diaper Cream if you experience anal irritation. The exact colonoscopy preparation instructions depend on the bowel preparation the doctor selects, the time of the colonoscopy, and any previous experiences with preparations. This slide shows the type of clear fluids that are recommended to be taken one day before the colonoscope. Avoid red, blue or purple color liquids as this might be confused with blood during the scope. No food or liquids is allowed 8 hours before the scope. Sips of water are allowed up to 3 hours before the scope. What happens during the day of the procedure? Driving to the hospital is not advised as the patient might feel tired after all the purging. Any denture is to be removed. The nurse or doctor will insert an intravenous line in the hand to later inject the medicine through it for relaxation and sleep. A local anesthetic is sprayed to the back of the mouth to numb it. It is advised to exhale when the throat is being sprayed. The spray might taste bitter. Oxygen may be given through a small plastic tube that is inserted into the nose. A plastic mouth guard is put between the teeth to prevent biting and damage to the scope. The patient is asked to lie on the left side during the procedure. The gastroscopy is usually done first. The gastroscope is inserted through the mouth and the procedure will take an average of 10 minutes. Next, the doctor will give the sedation through the intravenous line in the hand. One will feel relaxed and slowly go to sleep. Sometimes the doctor might suggest the patient tries to swallow to facilitate the passage of the scope into the user figures. This part of the procedure may be uncomfortable for about 15 seconds and it's usual to gag once or twice. The discomfort usually soon passes. To help with the examination, a nurse may use a suction tube to remove any excess saliva from the mouth. After the gastroscopy, the doctor will proceed with the colonoscope. The colonoscope is inserted through the anus and the procedure will take an average of between 15 and 30 minutes. Because of the sedation medication, patients are generally unaware of what's going on and do not remember anything when they wake up. Both during gastroscopy and colonoscopy, small pieces of tissue called a biopsy may be taken. If a polyp is found, particularly in the colon, it is usually removed using instruments like biopsy forceps and snares that are passed through the scope. There will be no pain during the biopsy or when the polyps are removed. What happens after gastroscopy and colonoscopy? Observation is for 2-4 to four hours until the sedation wears off. Eating is allowed once the numbness in the throat and sedation wears off which is usually after 2 hours. However, sometimes fasting is continued if there are further tests like a scan. The findings of the scope will be explained by the doctor before discharge. It is strongly advised that the patient does not drive or operate machinery for the rest of the day. One should get a responsible relative or friend to accompany them home or call a right heading service. Do not use public transport. It is okay to have normal food for the rest of the day. However, sometimes a liquid diet is recommended if a large polyp has been removed. It is urged that the patient rests at home for the rest of the day. It is okay to go back to work and drive the next day. What are some of the side effects of gastroscopy and colonoscopy? Bloating of abdomen with cramps is common. 
mild sore throat is common. Nausea due to the effects of the sedation. Some blood in the stools for a day or two. The effects of sedation can sometimes last for a day. Thank you.